Skull and Bones, The Dark History of an Impenetrable Secret Society With powerful members and mysterious rituals, the Skull and Bones Secret Society has always been associated with well-kept secrets and conspiracy theories. In 1918, under cover of darkness, Yale University student Prescott Bush desecrated the grave of Native American leader Geronimo. Aided by several conspirators, Prescott Bush took the skull and two bones from the skeleton of the famous leader of the Apache Indians and took them to the headquarters of Yale University. Here, the skull and bones became the emblem of the most mysterious secret society in American history. Prescott Bush, father of President George H. W. Bush and grandfather of George W. Bush was a member of this organization. The members of Skull and Bones are chosen from the ruling elite. Along with several colleagues, he was a member of an elite club at Yale University known as the Skull and Bones Society. Throughout history, some of the most famous American personalities have been Bonesmen, People of the Bones, loosely translated, that is, members of the Secret Society. The members of the organization were randomly selected from among the best students at Yale. In addition to the Bush men, both former presidents followed in Prescott's footsteps during their years at the university. The society included hundreds of government officials. Among them, former Secretary of State John Kerry and people in the entertainment industry, such as actor Paul Giamatti, a graduate of Yale University, denied that he was part of the society. However, aside from notable alumni and a few rumors and legends, not much is known about this organization. Founded in 1832, 131 years after the founding of Yale University, Skull and Bones was founded after some secret societies of the time clashed over an award ceremony. To overcome the conflict, several members from the Linonia, Brothers in Unity, and Calliopeia societies broke away and formed the Skull and Bones Society. William Huntington Russell and Alfonso Taft took on the task of organizing the society and, together with 12 other members, laid the foundations of a so-called inaugural group. Since 1832, every spring, the society elects 15 new members. Since the beginning of the 90s of the 20th century, women are also accepted. Among the candidates are student leaders and important names, children of personalities, from whom the society believes it could benefit in the future. The Initiation Ritual and Enigma The secret society initiation process is shrouded in mystery. According to some speculations, it involves occult practices, black magic, and even animal sacrifices. Like all societies in the university, Yale has seven such organizations. Skull and Bones has a central headquarters. Known as the Tomb, the Skull and Bones building is a windowless Gothic edifice located just off campus where members gather. The tomb is also said to be the resting place of Geronimo's bones after they were stolen by Prescott Bush, former President Martin Van Buren's skull, and Mexican revolutionary Pancho Villa. The Skull and Bones Secret Society also owns Deer Island, a patch of land used as a retreat, a place where members can go on weekends to rekindle old friendships. Amidst the secrecy and elitism promoted by society, Skull and Bones and its members have long been the subject of conspiracy theories. Skull and Bones is at the center of power. Some claim that the organization was behind the assassination of Kennedy, that it was responsible for the creation of the nuclear bomb, that it is sponsored and influenced by the Illuminati, or even that it exercises absolute control over the American spy agency, the CIA. However, no matter how bizarre it sounds, these terrors are not far from the truth when it comes to the members of the organization. At various times throughout history, members of the Skull and Bones Society controlled the largest fortunes in the U.S., the Rockefeller, Carnegie, and Ford families. Also, some members have skyrocketed their careers and held senior positions in the Council on Foreign Relations and powerful media corporations. And, of course, the most important aspect the organization gave three presidents of the United States, William Howard Taft, along with the two Bushes, George W. and his father. In fact, both candidates in the 2004 U.S. presidential election, Republican George W. Bush and Democrat John Kerry, were members of the Skull and Bone Secret Society at the time. No one ever speaks. 
Despite the conspiracy theories and accusations against them, the Bone people have kept a grave silence about what is going on in their sanctuary. Both Kerry and Bush were asked about their work with this society during the 2004 election, but neither disclosed anything. It's secret, Kerry replied dryly, not elaborating on the subject. For his part, Bush said that it's so secret, I can't say anything more about it. Hundreds of books, documentaries, and television shows have tried to learn more about how Skull and Bones works, but the secretiveness of the members of this secret organization has won out every time. Oscillating between the forces of light and the powers of darkness, these societies have been present in human society almost forever. The Templar Order, the Rosicrucian Order, Freemasonry, the Illuminati Order, all these groups are analyzed from the perspective of the historical context in which they appeared and evolved. 